Do you know what your customer acquisition cost is and how to figure it out? Okay. You've got 17.5% in T-bills amortized over the fiscal year. If not, you really need to watch this video because this is one of the most important things you can understand in order to make sure you're making the right decisions to make your business profitable. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time we release new content to help you simplify your business. I'm Amy Walker, Client Acquisition Specialist, and my job is to help you find the simplest path to consistently finding your ideal clients. Do you know what your client acquisition cost is? If so, let me know in the comments, just type yes or no. Years ago, I launched a program and it was all about how to help busy moms be able to create more balance between their business and their family and strengthen those relationships. And I priced it according to an emotional number. I thought, you know what? Moms can probably afford to pay this much. And we started selling the program. It sold well, it got great reviews, clients loved it. The problem was after a couple of months, I was noticing like, why are we creating all of these sales? And why do I feel like my cash supply is dwindling? I went in and figured out my customer acquisition cost on this specific program. And every time I sold the program, I was losing about $10. I had no idea. I was like mind blown when I realized this. It was one of those moments where you look at it and go, what the heck have I been doing? <laughs> And I didn't figure out that formula. And so I made a bad decision with pricing. I do not want that for you. I want you to understand how much you can afford to pay for a new client. And I want you to understand how to figure out the numbers. So that's what we're gonna accomplish in our video today. So first off, let's talk about what your customer acquisition cost is. This is simply how much it costs you to get a new client. And the formula to figure it out is pretty simple. Even if you don't love math, this one's not too hard. You take the total sales you minus the expenses you paid to get the client, you divide it by the number of new clients. It's a pretty simple formula. All right, so next we wanna talk about how do we figure out what the expenses are? Because some expenses are included in this and some expenses are not. So when we look at the expenses, we're gonna look at marketing plus sales. Marketing expense plus sales expense is the expenses that we consider when we're figuring out customer acquisition costs. Some things that we do not take into consideration, Operations is a no. Making sure that we have money for profit. We don't figure that in. And we're also not gonna put in our growth fund, which I think every business should have because there will be times when you want to expand, you wanna grow, you need to have some cash set aside for that. So those are all important numbers, they just don't figure into this particular formula. Okay, so let's do an example here. Let's say that you spent $100 on ads and that it generated you $500 in sales and you closed a total of 20 clients. Now you know you can take 500 minus 100 is 400, divide that by 20, our customer acquisition cost is $20 in this example. One of the things that I encourage you to pay attention to is both the marketing and the sales cost. In this example, maybe this is something that's very simple, like you're selling a product, you run an ad to it, and, that, and then they purchase on your landing page and there's really no sales cost. But a lot of times, especially with service-based providers, they tend to look a lot at the number of costs per lead and they'll say, oh, I'm getting $30 of a cost per lead, but they don't understand that it might be costing them $750 to actually acquire the client. And you need to track that number all the way through. It's really important, or you could find yourself just making bad decisions about pricing, making bad decisions about what marketing you're going to invest in. You could make a lot of bad decisions if you don't understand this number right here. So you gotta track it all the way through to the end. So there's a couple other things that I want you to take into account as you're looking at your numbers. The next number that is important to understand is your lifetime value of a customer. So there are businesses where the cost to acquire the client is actually higher than the amount that they make on the first sale. That's called a loss leader model. And it's pretty common out there where people will say, okay, I'm willing to spend $50 to get the first sale. The first sale is only 25, so I'm 25 in the hole when I start out. But over the lifetime value of the client, I know that client is going to be worth 
$3,000 to me. That number is really important to understand because it gives you a longevity perspective in terms of what you can spend and how you can go. However, there's a concern that I have when I see people basing their decisions on how much to spend on getting a client based on how much the client is ultimately going to spend with them. And here's my concern, cash flow. Because if you're losing a lot of money in the beginning, the question is how long does it take to get them to that lifetime value? I will do and support a loss leader if we can, within the next couple of months, recoup what we lost and be profitable. But if we're talking about it's gonna take them five years to spend this much money with us, then we could put ourselves in a cash crunch in the beginning simply because we're losing money up front and it's taking too long to get that money back. So I love looking at the lifetime value to kind of give you that large perspective but i just want you to think about it you know don't just get excited about numbers you have to actually think about what's the story behind the numbers what is it telling me and i want to make sure that my business is always profitable i feel like as a small business owner it's pretty important that we protect our small business because it's the livelihood of our family it's whether or not my kids get to go to college or if i have to pick which one is the smartest and only that one gets to go to college right like it's important that our business is is profitable. The other thing that I have seen people make mistakes on is looking at the dollars collected versus the dollars contracted. So for example, let's say that you have a customer acquisition cost of $150, and let's say that they're on average signing up for a $5,000 deal. That sounds really great, right? Like that, we would run those numbers all day long, but what if they are in a payment plan that lasts for the next 50 years? And so you are not really actually making that money back. And I know that's a really dramatic example, but I'm telling you sometimes in small businesses, you have this where you're like so focused on getting the deal written, but then they're on extended payment plans. You don't have a lot of cash coming in. And so the beginning of starting a new client is creating a cash crunch. And you might think, oh, well, that doesn't really happen. It does. In fact, a great example of that is in orthodontics. When, a, when an orthodontist signs up a new patient for a case of Invisalign, they have to pay a bunch of money up front for the Invisalign. So they have to pay really close attention to their cash flow and monitor their numbers very closely in the beginning because they actually start making their profits uh, over time. But up front, it actually is kind of a cash crunch for their business. So they have to make sure they have the funds available for it. Now it's a proven model, it works. So I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying you need to understand the problem. Otherwise you find yourself feeling like you're broke, but you're selling a lot. And that is not a fun feeling, my friends. If you're liking this content, I would love for you to let me know by hitting that like button. And if you're looking for more help and support in your sales and marketing, I invite you to come and take our sales and marketing GPS. If you know where you are and you know where you want to go, my team knows how to get you there. Business isn't magical, it's formulaic. And it'll take you about 10 minutes to fill out the assessment after which we'll give you a full eight page improvement plan. Plus you get to actually talk to a real business strategist who knows their stuff and can point you in the right direction of what you should implement first. Thank you so much for being a part of our channel and for supporting the videos. I would love to hear from you in the comments, leave me a like, and if you're new and haven't subscribed yet, you should. We provide great content three times a week to help you be able to successfully grow your company. Thanks so much, everyone.